Hey guys, this is Amber Rain Davis with NotableInc.com. I am hopping along with my fellow Altenew educators today for the Altenew Love and Friends Blog Hop. We have a few new educators on our team since the last hop, so be sure to check out everybody's blog and leave a comment for a chance to be entered to win an Altenew gift certificate. Today I have two videos. This is the first video and I'm going to be focusing on tips to stamp Altenew Build-A-Flower Rose like a pro. I'm frequently asked for tips on how to layer this particular stamp set in specifically those two little pieces in the center. So we're gonna go through that in detail today. Let's go ahead and get started. This six by eight stamp set was released before Altenew started providing the six by eight trifolds with all of the information on the inside. You have the layering guide on the back of the packaging. Um, but again, lots of people have questions about those two little pieces in the middle. So one of the things that I recommend to people when we have the trifold is to cut out those sample cards, put that in your MISTI and use that as a template for your stamping. Since we don't have that trifold, the next best thing is to use your die. So this is a Build-A-Flower and the die set always comes with your Build-A-Flower sets. What's great about it is it's the perfect size. It's the exact size of the stamp. So you can always put that into your MISTI and use that as a template. So what I would recommend is obviously take the dies off the sheet. I usually peel the adhesive off of this packaging just because I find it easier to get my dies in and out of the packaging. And obviously you want it to lay flat in your MISTI. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that in my MISTI, and then I'll get an A2 size piece of cardstock. I'm gonna load that in, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up each layer of the stamp with this die packaging. What's great about this is there's already a lot of contrast in between these layers that you have here. So we know that everything is stamped perfectly on this sample on the die package, and so if we line up our stamps correctly using this as a guide, we're gonna come out with some really nice flowers. So I've got my first one lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my A2 size cardstock and I'm gonna be using the Sweet Dreams color family today. So I will start with the lightest color, which is Dewdrops, And you can see that I'm conditioning my stamp. I've actually never used this stamp set before. So when people were asking me about this stamp set, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I've never used that one. So I did purchase it so that I would be able to do this video. And I hope that you guys enjoy it and, and find this helpful. So we'll go ahead and stamp in the lightest color first. And you do always want to do your base layer in the lightest color. And we'll do that in Dewdrops. And what I'm gonna do, so if you follow me, then you may know that I often will eliminate the base layer altogether because I like to retain really bright highlights. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and condition all of my stamps at the same time with that rubber eraser just to save some time. So oftentimes I'll eliminate the base layer. So I did also do that. So I stamped two base layers here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the second layer and I'll do a couple of those without the base layer as well. I ended up, we'll talk about this later in the video, but I ended up not liking this particular flower without the base layer. So most of the time it turns out really well and this particular instance, I didn't like it. We'll talk more about that later. So you can see I pulled my Misty towards myself because one, and you can see the two areas on the layering guide that I'm referring to. I'm looking in that upper left corner and the bottom right corner, those outer edges of the rows to line it up. And you can see me just pushing it a little back and forth. When I see that white highlight, I know I'm a little off and I need to bring it up or down. So I kind of just shift it around a little bit until you kind of you kind of will see it lock into place around those edges. But pull your misty towards you so you're looking directly over top of it. You're going to get your best vantage point that way. So once we have it loaded up, we're gonna bring our stamped cardstock back in and we'll pick the next darkest color and that's Aqualicious. I should also mention that I'm stamping multiple cards of this at a time. So I wanna have lots of flowers for my projects and if you've already got it loaded in there and lined up, you might as well do a few different colors. I'm actually doing the Sweet Dreams and then I'm also going to do a gray color family as well. 
And you can see that here, I'm gonna pull in another panel, but for this panel, I'm going to start with the second layer of the stamp set. So I'm eliminating that base layer. So for our third layer, what we're lining up is the outer edges on the right there. But I also look at the middle of the flower and I look for some dark areas because it's not just the edges that line up. There's more areas of the stamp that line up. So just take a look at the difference in the contrast and you'll be able to line up those areas. For the fourth one, and I think I'm gonna zoom in soon so you guys can see a little bit better. There's a lot of areas in the middle of this stamp that line up. So you've got the two main arches that are highlighted on the layering guide. And then here you can see I'm pointing out all of those areas that line up just perfectly. So we'll load this back in. And what color am I using? I think I'm gonna use Galactic Stream. So this is adding that deep, deep contrast. And then for our fifth layer, this is where I would recommend that you play around with the colors. So here I'm pointing out the difference in the contrast there and you wanna look at those areas so that you know what it's lining up. Now, my stamp was conditioned really well and I couldn't really see what it was going on. So I just cleaned it off with my stamp chamois and I'm looking at those areas to line up. And so when I first stamped this, because it's the center of the rose and it should be darker, I stamped it in Galactic Stream. It was way too dark for my liking. So when I stamp it again, I'm gonna stamp it in, I think, Teal Cave. I'm gonna go one shit, no, actually I'm gonna do Aqualicious. Um, because we're gonna do our fifth and, one, two, three, sixth layer in the middle as well. So if we get too dark in there, then you're not gonna see the contrast of this layer. So this is the darkest, darkest layer, and you can see all those little dark parts there. That's what you're gonna line it up with. So that's where that stamp goes. And you can see it fits in there. So you can see the difference in the contrast. Using the galactic stream for that fifth layer, I just didn't like that. So play around with your colors. It, you may not want the darkest, darkest color for such a large stamp. So here you can see the different panels. So the one on the far left has all of the layers as it's intended. You can see the difference between the top and the bottom flower with that contrast in the center. This panel I used, I started with dew drops for that second layer. And what I'm pointing out is because we didn't use the base layer, there's no pattern on that one petal. And I don't like that at all. So moving forward, I'll know, you know, note to myself, this is not a stamp set where I would want to eliminate the base layer just from personal preference. I just don't like that petal without the little bit of detail that the base layer offers. So it was good to give it a try. And again, I like eliminating base layers a lot of times. Here's the gray version, just because it retains those bright white highlights. So I've grabbed three of those um, roses and here. You can see the difference with the die cutting the difference without the base layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create an arrangement with this. This is, those, that is the just the outline stamp from the Build-A-Flower Rose. And I'm just doing those in the Obsidian Black ink, which is the pigment ink that stamps so, so well. I've cut out a couple masks just with the dye and I've trimmed my sentiment stamp. I don't like doing that too often, but I wasn't gonna be able to fit it into this um, arrangement that I had here without cutting it up. So I'll just get those sentiment stamped and then we'll move on to the second card. And then to finish off the arrangement for this first card, I went ahead and die cut a couple of the leaf clusters and I'm stamping the leaves in with just one of the detail layers in obsidian black. And that just adds a little bit of separation between those roses so that there's higher contrast there. So for my second card, I went ahead and used the layered cupcake stamp set and I just stamped the detail layer of the cupcake once in obsidian black and once in the lightest color from the gentleman's gray color family. So here I just have some Altenew embossing paste that I've mixed with some of the, that looks like the Aqualicious over there over on the side. And I'm just spreading that out over the Feeling Dotty stencil because I wanted to have a little bit of texture in the background. 
and so we're going to peel this up this was one because i didn't film the other panel that i'm going to use so i just have less on this one i've covered it up with a scrap of paper and i am flicking on some jet black ink spray also from alta new and after I lift up the scrap paper, I decide that I also wanted a little bit of the black splatter on the embossing paste as well. And you probably didn't need this much splatter. I went a little overboard, but I still think it looks nice. Here's the finished card. I put the black um, cupcake paper in the back to show some depth there. The sentiment is, the bottom sentiment is from the Layered Cupcake stamp set, and I believe that Everything is Better With is from the sentiment strips, but maybe not. I added a couple sequins, and that was it. I did use some dimensional adhesive just to give it, to pop it up, and here is our other final card with the arrangement. Um, I cut up one of the leaf clusters just to spread those out a bit, and I hope that you feel confident after watching this video to use the build a flower rose and get those little middle pieces in there correctly. This is a great technique to use with any of your layering stamp sets that don't have the trifold where you can cut out the template and put it in the misty. Use the die packaging. Um, it is the perfect size and I just think it's a great technique to use. I have two other cards on this hop featuring no line watercoloring and some stencil techniques. These are the two cards here. They also have their own video, so I'll link that at the end, so be sure to check that out. Definitely leave me a comment and let me know if you found this helpful. I also would love to know what other stamp sets are you maybe struggling with and would like a video on. Leave me a comment, I'd love to have some requests. Be sure to leave us a comment on our blogs for a chance to win a gift card to all to new. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed already, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell button so you get notified of future inspiration. I would love to see you on a regular basis. Thank you so much for stopping by and until next time, breathe, ink, inspire.